Hey hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to another stream in the Baining Trains in World 2 universe. While while uh, Trains in World 3 is dawning and casting shadows everywhere. As long as we can, we are going to enjoy the Train Sim World 2 world and then we will, I think, switch to the Train Sim World 3 world and do probably just the same that we did in the world before. Hey AJ, thank you for moderating this stream. I think what we want to do today, or what I want to do today, and where I want to invite you to join me is to go on a ride with the baby bullet train in the Peninsula Corridor. Oh, no, there is actually a, a spelling mistake in the title, I'm afraid. Rinding is not what I'm going to do. We're going to ride the bullet. We're not going to bite it either. We're going to ride it. Thank you for uh, making me correct this error. So, we are going to ride the baby bullet train in the Peninsula Corridor. That means I can already turn on the DLC. T train symbol 2 Peninsula Corridor. And as always, I like not to jump into a certain service um, just by picking the service from the timetable mode, but by exploring on foot, spawning on foot, and then walking over to our train. A nice thing that I have just found out last week is that if you do the following, just go into the locomotive that you want to drive. This is the baby bullet locomotive. The Motive Power Express 36PH-3C Caltrain livery and then you go into the into the roster with all your services and if you think well I want to drive this service 232 San Francisco to San Jose at 844 and you just leave the cursor there and then press escape to go back and start exploring on foot I want to do that maybe in November so that the light is a bit lower and then you continue and then time of day you start actually with uh, a timestamp just before the timestamp of the service you had the cursor in I don't know if this is intentional but this actually helps a lot if you want to use this feature when you um, yeah, want to spawn on the platform just before the service starts. I'm even adding five minutes more so that we can have a more in-depth look on our baby bullet train. Because the train itself is sculptured and modeled very nicely in my opinion, especially the cap car. There are a lot of nice switches in the cap car, light switches, the the door control control is it's very nicely modeled, but only in the cab car. There is no model door control in the actual locomotive. So, and here it is already. Our baby bullet train in San Francisco station. And this is the cab car that I have been talking about, the rear end, so the train does not turn around. It just goes back the other way. And then you sit here in this compartment. It has its own uh, headlights, numbers, and it does not have the marker lights on. This is why we actually have to go into the cab car cab. Also from the inside it is modeled very nicely. A lot of a lot of signs there, space to put the luggage, toilets that are obviously not working, but still they are there. And signs to instruct the passengers what they are supposed to do in an emergency and we have already a lot of passengers in our train this is why it's called a bi-level train because it has a well, car it has two levels built by Bombardier if I'm not mistaken 
and this is the area where you sit when you're driving the train from the cab car. So I will take over this train by butt tagging it and this is your cab so if you want to turn on the marker lights this is where you put the but push the buttons but it is not working because you have to activate this cap first so you have to turn the key and then you can actually set the marker lights in the cap of the cap car this traffic management system self test actually works you can see this thing doing this funny pattern and then giving a sound so self test works as far as i know it does not really work in operation but at least the self test here is the door control system door open door closed with a lot of indicator lights door control those are the buttons where you can choose which side you want to open like we want to do the right side you set that and then you push the doors open button and then you can actually see them opening I was a bit too late because I got caught underneath the roof but now the doors are open along the train people are not yet boarding because the time for the service has not started yet yeah this is all what you need in the cap you have the typical switches for fuel pump generator field engine run you've got the valve for the brake lever you got the place where you put your reverser in just one issue that we had this morning if you're driving from this cab and you are wondering bec because you're applying throttle and you release the brakes and you set these switches to go and it does not apply power the trick is after setting those switches just press the engine run button once and this more or less indicates to the train that you want to drive from the cap here and not from the front and then applying the throttle actually makes the train move so this is a thing that you tend to forget at least I forgot it and I had to think about it a bit until I remembered that this is the way the train works now the red marker lights are on The annoying sound from the traffic management system. Yeah, well, I think it is a warning sound and uh, so it needs to be annoying. Now our marker lights are on. This is what the rear end of the train is supposed to do. Marker lights, two red marker lights so that everybody can see this is the rear end. And uh, I think in this uh, DLC they made the headlights really strong. Just look at that if you turn on the headlights here this is dim and auxiliary and this is bright and auxiliary this is a lot of light that is coming from this those headlights can't see it but as soon as you hit something with your beam then the reflection is huge and also when the trains are coming from the opposite direction there are so many trains with rather weak lights the lights especially on the cab cars here in this DLCs they are decent they are really decent okay before I leave this cap obviously I deactivate the door control and uh, I deactivate the setup key so everything here is back to normal only the lights are on just checking if the lights are still on yeah they are still on so maybe in a in a different stream we can uh, do the reverse service from driving from the cab car today we want to see it from the locomotive this is when you pass from one car to the other oh I almost got stuck those trains have a door control system here in, in, on in their middle doors usually works like this that the conductor that is riding on the train can put the key here and then this panel here will control the doors for the whole train you know that from the bud trains uh, in the new york area most probably but they are unfortunately not working but they are at least modeled yeah and you can already see this train is long this is really long i think it is seven cars plus the locomotive by level 
that makes it rather heavy for a passenger train and uh, we have to keep that in mind when slowing down the train. I've always wondered if you have wheel sets here where the brake disc is actually on the outside of the wheel but it totally looks like it. I, I lack the technical understanding that really this is the case and I have not seen these thingies move but it looks at least to me like this. So this is our locomotives. Guys if you want to go on train spotting just go ahead. Yeah. Why is this train so this locomotive so big actually? It has this these uh, yeah coating, those walls that distinguish this type of locomotive from uh, other American locomotives that have those gangways on their sides. The gangways are here as well, but there are those walls in front of it. This locomotive has a head and power unit here. I will just talk about the head and power in a couple of seconds. And the main engine here, the main diesel engine, a 16 cylinder EMD prime mover and five fans on top of the roof. Yeah, this is our cap. Looks a bit like a plane actually. I like the panorama view that you have from uh, and we just sit down and set up our cap. First thing that we might want to do is to set all the switches that activate this control stand. We set the engine run, control and fuel generator field. So now we are controlling from this end. I want to have some gauge lights because I want to see what I'm actually doing. This is the TMS system on the front end. It does not work. We have wiper control and we have the head end power. Head end power, HIP, is a second engine most of the time in the train. Sometimes it is a thingy connected to the prime engine of the train and it is supposed to generate all the uh, electric current that you need for lights and heating and other communities, commodities that the passengers want to have on a train. So we set this to isolate, start the motor soon as it runs, can set it to run and then turn it on and all of a sudden our passengers have lights in their train. Okay, we're loading passengers. We have seen this in the last stream. This yellow thingy is actually working. But I guess nobody is actually getting on the train because they are waiting for us to close the doors and then open them once again. You can, you can see this these lights at the side of the cars I tell you about the brake status see now that I've opened I've opened uh, the doors within the specified time margin uh, on some trains you can uh, I, I'm not sure if this train is actually in the livery designer I have to look that up later they did not uh, provide this for all the trains. Probably not for this one. In the fuel stock box I activate the alerter. That is the only security system that we have on the train. We don't need the ground lights and step lights here. The valve we set for lead or dead, and then I activate the independent brake and let the brake activate. So, close the doors again. We are a little, little late already. You see on the instruments that the brake pipe is filling, and as soon as I insert the reverser, put it to forward, we can actually start.
I will try to uh, do the uh, horn honking and bell ringing as I've seen it in some videos from Caltrain what they actually do and this will be a lot of honking and bell ringing I can tell as much already but nevertheless I want to try to do that but before that a short break and not a break in the stream but a break in a, a stream but a break in the ride because I want to give you some information about the logics of US American signaling so that you actually know or yeah if you already know then it is some recap what the signals do on American railways we all know that uh, there is not one US American uh, signaling system but there are many so every railroad more or less has their own uh, set of rules and they can be quite complicated and I have tried to uh, try to put some sense and order in it there are more or less two big different uh, set of rules when it comes to uh, signaling in the US you can have a speed signaling system where the signal ac aspects tell you how fast you can go on the track and you can have a route signaling system where the signals mainly tell you if you are diverging on a switch or not. The main part in this DLC we will be traveling in the Caltrain uh, part where we have a speed signaling system. And what does that mean a speed signaling system? We have a set uh, number of different speeds. We have obviously the track speed, every part of the track has a, a, a maximum speed that you can go on it and obviously the lowest speed that you can go is a speed of zero, that is a stop and in between there are, mm, I might want to call them steps of, of speeds that are traditionally called limited, medium, slow and restricted and every railroad enterprise assigns different values to those steps and some have in between uh, steps like reduced speed or reduced slow speed but for our purposes here on this DLC I want to look at the Caltrain, the CTX passenger speed so there is also a distinction between passenger and freight uh, limits so the track speed obviously belongs uh, to the track and depends on the track. It is a maximum of 79 usually, unless you use an automated train control system. So unguided, only secured by the driver and his awareness, his vigilance, you cannot go faster than 79 miles per hour in the United States. Um, that has been actually fixed by law, so this is uh, one of the few facts that is not to the disposition of the railway enterprises, but this is a law providing that no train without uh, automated control systems up to a certain standard cannot exceed 79 miles per hour. That was, I think, decided in, in, in the 40s or 50s after um, a, a bad train disaster. I think the Napwell or Napwell train disaster, something like that. Anyway, so 79 is usually our track speed limit. Limited speed is 50 here in Caltrain. Medium speed is 35. Slow is 20. Restricted max 20. What's the difference? In restricted, you cannot go faster than at a speed that allows you to stop on site. So it depends on the track, on the bends, on, on, on obstacles for your site, uh, how fast you can actually go on this part of the track. So if you can't see very far, you have to slow down below the 20 and 20 is the max, even if you can't see everything. Yeah, and stop is zero. And then you have the signals that tell you that up from this point you are not allowed to go faster than this specific speed and you might have seen that obviously that American signals don't only have one signal head like a traffic light on the road 
but they have typically three on top of each other. And so they can have three different aspects. Aspects always meaning the color that the lamp is showing. And the easiest signal is the clear signal. The topmost is green, below them they are red. If they are missing and it is only one light, then it will be green, has exactly the same uh, meaning than this, but usually there are three of them. And uh, now the idea is to shift down this green light from top to, bo to bottom to show that you are supposed to go on limited speed, on medium speed, on slow speed, on restricted and then on stop there is no green light anymore. And because you only have three positions you have to yeah, find something what to do in the intermediate steps. So a flashing green is actually faster than a steady green. You shift the green down, you have it flashing, it is limited. Not flashing in the middle, medium. On the bottom, slow. Then you run out of a fourth position, so you have red lights, one of them is flashing, meaning restricted. Non-flashing, all red, means stop. So this is the signal that tells you from this point you have to go on that speed. It um, After running over the switches, you're usually free to go again. This is why it is called a clear, a limited clear, a medium clear and so on. You have to go down to this speed and after you've run over all the switches, then you can go back to track speed. To warn you that you are approaching a, uh, a reduction in a speed limit, you have usually approach uh, signals. Those approach signals are easily recognized because the topmost of them is yellow. And then you have the same aspect than in the definite signal here. Like the limited, medium, flashing, green and the yellow on top uh, warns you that a uh, limited clear is incoming and so on. The slow is a bit different because you would have the green on the bottom and we will just see why we don't want to have that. So we demote this green to a yellow. So yellow over yellow is an approach slow. Here it is the same principle again. Yellow over flashing red, approach a flashing red and yellow non-flashing over red is approach a red. Because the stop signal is so important, you have an advance signal in front. So sometimes you just want to be warned that an approach signal is incoming, so that you know two signals in front of the stop signal that you will have to stop after the second signal that is incoming. This is why you have a flashing yellow in front of the steady yellow. So this is the typical stop sequ sequence here. Uh, flashing yellow, it is an advance approach, then the approach, and then the stop signal. And then you can attach to your approach signals uh, well an, an order that makes you slow down from this point on. So, so far we only have a warning here telling you there will be a reduction in the future. So you can just go on and then it is up to you to slow down your train to that. With the uh, harder restrictions here, in the rules they are stated if you're passing an approach slow, restricted or stop, you have to bring down your speed to medium. So that when you see those signals you can actually re react. With the advanced approach it is you have to drop down to limited because it is still more distance to the red. And then if you want the driver to slow down even more already at the approach signal or at the advanced signal you can shift down same principle like here the signal aspect that you have here yellow over green a bit and then you have a medium approach medium or a medium approach slow a medium approach restricted or a medium approach and with those signals you have the uh, order connected that you don't only have to drop down 
to medium speed at some time, but as soon as possible, at best already when you're passing this signal here. The same principle here, you shift down the flashing yellow and you have a medium advanced approach that tells you to not go faster than limited speed already from this signal here. And if you want people to go even slower at this point, you can put them when approaching a stop signal even more, shift it down one step more, and then they are supposed to not be faster than slow speed here. Then they can go back to limited again. Here they can go back to medium again before they get closer to the stop signal. Yeah, those are, I think, almost all the signals that we encounter in this part of uh, the uh, Caltrain territory. And when you look at those signals, they can be quite confusing. This is why I try to um, have some order and method in them and uh, to, to see the logic that is at work here. Uh, another thing, sometimes you don't have three uh, signal heads on top of each other, but only two or one. If there are signals missing or even black... <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, if 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 a signals below a green or a red, uh, a green or a yellow, a red or black or missing, it's the same. So black signals are always to be treated like reds in case the light bulb broke, and missing signals underneath are always to be treated as reds. At the same time, blacks above signals are always to be treated as red lights. So. Therefore, you have a lot of combinations that you can actually encounter. But enough for the theory. Let's switch off the presentation and go back into the train. We are still running in a 10 miles per hour speed limit because we are still in the yard, in the yard we only have those dwarf signals on the floor. And since we are restricted to 10 miles in the yard anyway, or at this in the station area, there is no point. The train that is coming in reminds me that we should have our lights on. Always bright with auxiliary lightings when driving. Except if there is a train coming from the other direction you can dim your lights so that the other engineer does not get blinded this is the train from the front with San Francisco skyline in the background You can see the other train did not turn around, it is just going backwards with the cab in front. Oh, there are still the markers on because I looked into uh, an introduction before, but I don't want the markers on. They are always turned on by force. You see this X sign, this is a sign that you are getting to a level crossing and tells you to prepare to honk to warn people that want to cross this level crossing that you are actually approaching. This is a speed sign here. This tells us we can go 25. Upper number is always for passenger trains. As soon as the whole train has passed this sign. Not now. But the whole train has to be passed this sign. Since we are only going with 8 miles, this will take a while. This is why I did not start honking at the X sign. Because the rules of operation, at least the NORAC rules or the, the, the general commission of operating rules rules say that you have to start honking 15 to 20 seconds before you get to the level crossing. Unless you are traveling with 45 miles or more than starting at the sign. And uh, 
then you do the so-called rule 14L pattern. It is single player only. They are actually debating whether there is an option for for multiplayer in the future with Train Sim World 3, but at the moment it is only only multiplayer. Some want to have a conductor or guard with you. Some want to have a dispatcher actually. So 14L rule, what does that mean, a 14L rule or a 14L sign? This pattern, long, long, short, long, is the 14L pattern that you have to honk when approaching a level crossing. And you have to keep honking as soon as your loco has cleared the level crossing. And it is called 14L because in an old rule book the rule concerning how to use and when to use your whistle was rule 14 and all the patterns that you could use uh, were listed there starting A, B, C, D, E, F and so on and the L pattern is this long long short long pattern for the level crossings This is our first stop already. I always try to be at 25 miles when we hit the platform. Caltrain drivers have the bells on as long as they are passing platforms, if I saw that correctly on the videos that I watched. Okay. Let's see if we got the train to the platform. No, not really. But this is because the game advises us to stop where we stopped. So the last door actually is behind the platform. But I stopped at almost perfect stopping position. Yeah, 500 points. So no way around this, but if you look at it, there was still some room. The loco does not necessarily need to stand at the platform. When starting, Again, if I saw that correctly, they just ring the bells for a certain length of time without honking the horn. And then the ditch lights go into this pulsating alternating pattern that you can see like left, right, left, right, left, right. As soon as you have the bell on, the lights do this. Now we can accelerate. You see the amp meter here on the right? This is very important because you want to have the hand not going into the red when accelerating. As long as you are keeping in the green or at on the border between green and red, then you are quite safe that you will not run into wheel slips, at least not in normal conditions. I think this is really a beautiful DLC that 
often does not get the credit that it deserves because it is a bit shaky and crashes sometimes and uh, well there are a few issues obviously connected with this DLC but this is sad because it is a, a unique one I think and uh, it is really nice I like it very much the trains are beautiful the route is beautiful and it is really a long route we will see that there are many 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 stations and uh, it will take us quite a while even on this express service to get to San Jose in one piece next up will be in Milbre or whatever you pronounce this And as you can see, I am uh, accelerating to the 79 track speed here. I think at the next tunnel there is the first fixed trackside sign that warns us about an upcoming speed limit reduction. It has actually quite a a simple system is it here already? yeah it is here already you see this yellow sign here with the arrow pointing down that means we have half a mile to reduce our speed to the speed that was indicated 65 miles, we have half a mile to drop. There won't be a second sign, just stay under the indicated speed limit as soon as you have traveled half a mile. It's about here, I guess. When hitting the brakes, you might have noticed that at first the At first uh, the air brakes are kicking in and then the dynamic brake takes over. Speed reduction is over. Like this is the meter for the air brake as soon as I hit the brakes this red hand will go up, the white will go down, the red hand will go up, brake pressure pipe, uh, brake pipe pressure will decrease, pressure in the brake cylinders will increase to a certain amount and then you can see this hand on this meter here go into the yellow indicating that the motors are now applying brake force with the dynamic brake. This always takes a while and it is important that you have your your throttle lever in idle position otherwise the dynamic brake cannot operate here on this lever in idle see the bay or at least a body of water the bay I think is on the other side of the peninsula or just uh, so well anyway a nice body of water with the sun on top of it another speed limit is incoming another train oh I think it's a 70 limit so I actually slowed down a bit too much Now we're getting in an area where we are always a bit prone to crash with the game, so keep your fingers crossed that we make it through South San Francisco without a crash.
not meaning a train crash, but a program crash. Here, the sign telling us that we can go back to line speed, 79 miles. This little sign with the S on top of it tells us that we are approaching a station. This is always in one mile uh, distance to the next station and the station that is incoming is South San Francisco. Where we hopefully will not get a crash. Yeah, you might have noticed this little lag. This sometimes is the point where the game crashes. But we made it in one piece. That is a good sign. The speed limit is incoming here around the bend. Speed limit sign. Level crossing 14L pattern. Another X sign. Another level crossing. So I always try, I don't always succeed, but I always try to time my honking in a way that the short sound is always short before the level crossing and the last long one is when I'm actually passing the level crossing. Sometimes the horn sound gets a bit distorted by the lag in the game. Speed limit ended in the station, so we can use the descent to accelerate to line speed 79. And then we will have the first stop out of line speed 79. and appro approaching Millbrae. Millbrae? Millbrae? I don't know. So at a certain point in front of the stop you want to go back to idle in your throttle because you need the dynamic brakes So I was a little bad, I was a little late on the brakes, so I need to apply them quite heavily. That I get at least close to my 25. 
But it is a long platform. What you see here is this train does not take it gladly if you apply too much brake force at the end. It wants you to slow it down very gently, otherwise it will just roll or slide on for up to 10 yards. Not like an electrostar that you can just yank to or stop from going 10 or 15 miles. Not with the baby bullet train. As soon as the doors are closed, you might want to use the independent brake so that you can release the automatic train brake for a faster start. Have a look again at the amp meter with throttle 5, notch 5 should be good in the beginning and then you can look at the hand and see when it is time to increase the throttle without damaging. Yes, it is actually still running this this uh, this service here, this route, San Francisco to San Jose and even on. The route goes still on further in, in, in real life and the baby bullet services are still running, I think. I heard something about they have th them having been stopped or cancelled, but I think they have been reinstituted. I don't know if you can hear that on the stream, I, I really like this low humming noise that this train makes and, and it really gives you the feeling that there is a lot of power forcing this really heavy consist along its way. You can see the setup of those stations. There is one platform on the side of those two tracks, of this twin track, and then there is another in the middle, and that actually makes it necessary that people walk across the tracks if they want to get to the middle part of the platform. What is obviously not so uh, safe can be dangerous and I think there is a rule in the operating rules that you must not drive through those two platforms if there is a train waiting on the middle platform even if there is room because you always have the risk that passengers are crossing. Oh, I'm speeding heavily because I was so focused on explaining and doing my 14L
docked for speeding and forgot to stop. Even worse, I should focus more on my driving than on my explaining. Let's see how much of the train we get to a stop at the platform here. Okay! <laughs> that was a neat stop. <laughs> I'm afraid most of the passengers fell off their chairs, but we made it. Perfect stop, 500 points. <laughs> uh, this is not how you're supposed to do it. You can see that a lot of uh, level crossings are up are incoming. Service, let's see the service. I always forget that. Need a reminder. But obviously as long as we are stationary, we don't need to do the 14L honking. Timetable is actually quite uh, easy going. Obviously, when you're just starting your service or your train, you don't need to start honking 15 to 20 seconds before you hit the level crossing but you just start honking as soon as the train is moving. Yeah, well, doing the honking and the bell ringing and the explaining and the approaching, braking overloads me a bit. But this is another nice thing on this route that they actually have to do a lot of stuff. So I think this was the last crossing. Sometimes you can see on those X signs a number that indicates how many level crossings there are in a certain sequence so I hope I won't miss the next stop this time it is quite close, it's Hillsdale I'm not sure if you're actually supposed to honk while you're passing a, a platform because this will warn people, obviously but on the other hand it will blow their ears out so maybe there is an exception As soon as you're clear of the level crossing, you can also turn off the bell.
So I'm not sure what this X sign is for. Okay, now I actually have... I missed removing my brakes or releasing my brakes. And I am a bit slow on the platform, so... I will just apply some more traction to creep to the end. Bell on as long as we are going along the platform. Yes, on the one yard. Apply the independent brake, the brake that only breaks the loco, or slows down the loco, fixates the loco in place. Wait for the boarding procedure to finish. Well, I locked my doors a bit early, maybe. But passengers can open them if they want to board still. And then, launch sequence. Throttle lever is very sensitive if you operate it with the keyboard. You're always quick to move it two notches instead of one if you press the key too long. Two point seven miles to San Carlos. So in case anyone wonders how much traction force this locomotive actually has, it is an MPH thirty six PH dash three C that tells us that the prime mover has a traction force of three thousand six hundred horsepower. This is where the thirty six comes from. The MP is the manufacturer motive power I think 33.6 thousand horsepower pH means it's a passenger model and has a head end power device the dash 3 means it is the third revision or the third model of this kind of locomotive and uh, the C tells us that the head end power is a separate motor it is not or a separate engine it is not uh, just connected to the prime mover and dragging a tiny bit of the prime mover energy for the lights etc but it is an own standalone in, in yeah a separate engine As you might have noticed, we are now on a piece of track where there are no level crossings. What is quite relaxing for the ears.
and also for slowing down the train because it does not distract you from applying brakes at the proper time. That noise is the alerter that always comes on if I fail to operate a throttle control in 90 seconds. I actually thought that operating the brakes would interrupt the alerter countdown as well, but at least on this train it does not. brake is applied. So if I'm actually paying attention on that then I wait until 15 seconds before the departure time before initiating the closing the doors sequence. Lo as soon as the doors are closed I release the train brakes so that the train is being held by the independent brake alone two seconds before start. The bells throttle at the same time releasing the independent brake. If you apply a bit of throttle before releasing the independent brake, this usually helps you that the train does not start rolling backwards before because this is something that you actually do not want at all. So applying a tiny amount of throttle and then releasing the independent brakes or make it more or less at the same time enables you to secure the train from rolling backwards. If you're starting the train on a hill this is especially crucial. I love those school buses that are always running around on the American routes. Sometimes there are hordes of those school buses See, one on the right, one on the left. Mm -hmm. We're going uphill. You can s hear it in the sound of the engine. And you can see that it is not gaining speed really fast, even though we are going on notch 8 so the tiny baby bullet really has to pull a lot here alerter the speed reduction is not for us it is only for freight trains
If there is a level crossing in front of the platform, this at least reveals you from honking before starting to drive by a platform. Because you have to honk anyway. Actually, I have read that the NTSB, I think is the name, the security board that looks into train accidents and is actually in charge of keeping an eye on safety and railroading, that they actually make checks if drivers adhere to the, the honking rules. And then I think the First the Enterprise gets punished and then the driver. No, in the game there isn't. Actually in, in real life you can get punished for uh, honking without a reason and uh, in the game, as you can imagine, there is a lot of honking without a reason going on. This actually would be cool if you could get your rewards according to... if you adhere to those rules like honking and speed rules and stuff. This is very limited at the time being in the game. And obviously this this requires everybody with the developers to actually understand the train rules of every country and uh, country that is represented in in the game even more than it is necessary to do the signaling and stuff and then to recreate that in the game I think that is quite difficult I remember one of DTG's streams where I think Sam it was talked about that they are at least thinking about uh, a system that uh, rewards you more for sticking to rules and uh, not applying too much brake force and stuff like this instead of well at the moment you get your points only for not speeding and this is only in accordance to track limit not for signaling speed and, and anything else and for getting your train to a stop in the correct position apart from that you can more or less do what you want as long as as far as the rewarding system in the game is um, involved. Menlo Park, I think before getting to Menlo Park we are passing through a station that is special in the way as that it only operates when there is a football game in the stadium that is next to that station. I think this is that station here. But I am not entirely sure about that. Oh my god, there are so many level crossings.
Oh, we are a bit behind schedule. But still not in a bad way. Ah yeah, that is this the third thing that the in-game reward system docks you for if you're late, then you don't get points for or not as many points for actually taking passengers along the route. Palo Alto is the next one. In a very short distance, only 1.2 miles. So we won't actually be able to get to track speed 79 until we have to stop at Palo Alto again. There is this special bridge coming up, this steel bridge that you can already see. Another honking sign. already slowing down for Palo Alto and if I remember correctly Palo Alto is a stop that is in a descent so that the train tends to creep along when you try to slow it down that's why I'm so slow already Falling back behind schedule a bit, but we will we will catch that later. I'm quite sure. Creepy, 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 creepy. Oh, I might have overdone it. Now you see. We are so slow and it is still creeping on. Chili not now, you have to wait a bit. We are not still not in San Jose. Then we can go out for a walk. Again sequence like before. As soon as the yellow thing touches this corner, you can initiate the door closing sequence. Doors are closed. Release the train brake. Initiate the start sequence, build up some traction, release the independent brake. And get the traction effort to the border between green and red. And keep it there. We have the the sun directly in our face. We have a sun visor, but unfortunately, not for this sun. <laughs> okay, next stop, one point four miles, California Avenue. Again, we won't be able to get to line speed. Or maybe this is the station for the football games, I don't know. 
one of them in this area. I guess it is. And I think it's the other one. There was a hidden crossing sign. Already in the slowdown for Palo, uh, for California Avenue. Same as in Palo Alto, the train tends to push forward here because we are stopping while going downhill. So be prepared to aim for like four or five yards earlier than you'd normally want to stop. because it is always creeping on. But we are quite nicely on our timetable. Just a few seconds late. Can you can save some seconds by initiating the door closing sequence early. And then start sequence, have the bell for the start. Notch 5, that gets you to the border between green and red. Get rid of the bell and as soon as the hand on the amp meter is dropping you can increase the power one notch at a time until we are at notch 8 maximum. San Antonio is the next station 2.2 miles And you see this really quite a long route, station upon station, and we are not stop stopping at each and every one, but only on a selected few. You might have wondered why I uh, took all the effort of explaining the signaling, because so far we only got clears but there will be some signaling action at the end of the service I'm quite sure at least when we are stopping at Lawrence because at Lawrence we go off the main track into a siding and this means we will get at least some reduced speed there. Forty L sequence across the level crossing, then you can turn off the bell, but the next one is already incoming. The train is coming from the other side. Dim your lights. Some drivers take a rather dim view on being blinded. then initiating the slowdown for the stop at San Antonio. If 
you see that you're actually rather slow, you can release the brakes a bit. Just make sure that you are at 25 or maximum 30 miles when you hit the platform. Honk, the bell goes on and have it ringing for the whole stopping sequence when you're next to the platform. off, open doors. Have another look on the beautiful train. You can actually see two exhausts. I think one is for the diesel engine, the prime mover. The other one is for the head end power engine. Mountain view with the next stop again a school bus on the left. Mountain view as the name insinuates is on the top of a hill so we have to climb the hill first to get there. lights are still at dim. This is okay because there is a train coming from the other side, but after that we will have to turn them up again. This is actually one of the MP15 shunters with a very short freight train. Add on local DLC for this route. platform again. When you are at 15 miles, when there are still 100 yards to go, this is usually quite well. Most of the time this enables you to stop in time. Break on. 
passengers board the train please they are doing this nicely here yeah? door sequence train brake release bells power independent brake release more power and on the move Sunny Vale, first mountain view, then Sunny Vale. Probably we're going downhill now. Yeah, if there is no honking to do, we just don't know what to do with our time. Well, probably we can just enjoy the landscape. Pacify the alerter. that the train makes when rolling on the track. Again, a drop in speed limit only for freight trains. Isolated level crossings are nice because you can celebrate the 14L honk sequence. And slowing down for the stop in Sunny Vale. I guess one of the three stops that were indicated is this little level crossing here. They have those passenger level crossings that work like level crossings for cars, but are actually for passengers to get on the other side of the station.
have the train being held by the independent brake. And go! Next is Lawrence, and for the first time we actually see a different signal than clear. We see a yellow over a flashing green, and you might remember from the introduction that this is an approach limited. That means we can go track speed now, <coughs> but we have to be down at limited speed equals 50 miles per hour as soon as we are at the next signal. But that means we are safe to accelerate to at least 50 miles. Now we see the next signal, and the next signal is a medium advance approach. Flashing yellow on the middle signal head. And now we see why we had to go down to limited, because we are going on a siding across a switch, and the switch has a limit of 50, as you can see here in the speed profile. And this is why the signaling took us down. Now we are under an advanced approach, a medium advanced approach, that means we must not go faster than limited speed and prepare for getting an approach signal on the next signal. So I will keep below the 50, even though it is still one mile to go to the stop. Next signal is incoming and it is, as expected, an approach. And that means a normal, regular approach. We have to drop our speed from now to 35, what is medium speed. But we don't need to rush it, we can just do it gradually. But what is done is done. If you're not too concerned about your timetable, you can just drop to medium speed and then let the train coast. And the next signal will be a stop signal. But since we know that we are supposed to stop at the station anyway, it will be the signal behind the platform. So we can just perform our stop as it is scheduled without being bugged too much by the incoming stop signal. Almost forgot my bell. And stop. Oops. The signals made us drop behind the time table a bit. We are already beyond the time that we are supposed to depart from that station. But whatever. You can see the stop signal ahead. But now we're locking our doors and the signal switches to an approach limited. So no problem for us. We can start. 
And why again an approach limited? Most probably because we have to get back to the main track across a switch. And this switch, if it is of the same kind as the other, has a limit of 50, so we are getting an approach limited, telling us not to go faster than 50 on the switch. So that is actually the charm of speed signaling, that the signals warn you about speeds that are applicable for the switches that you have to cross. And at the same time, when you see, oh, I get a, redu uh, a reduction in speed limit, then this is a hint that you will diverge. And as expected, here is the limited, and now it is a limited clear, green on the middle one, flashing that means we have to stay below the 50 unless the whole train has cleared the switch or the switches that are incoming and then we can go back to track speed. Now the train has cleared the switch, we can throttle up. And go to Santa Clara, Santa Clara, Silicon Valley is the second but last stop or the last stop before the terminus. And now we are actually going to the signaling divide. There is a point in the track where the speed signaling switches to route signaling and that engineers do not miss that. There is a neat sign. Now we get an approach limited again. So I let the speed go down gradually to the 50, what is limited speed. And then let the train coast. And for the next signal, I think it is the signal post where this sign is attached telling us that we are leaving the speed signaling uh, area and entering the uh, route signaling area so that we do not get confused by the signals. Train from the opposite direction, turn the lights to dim. The driver, the AI driver on the other train does not return the curtsy. Anyway. Okay, what do we have here? We have a flashing yellow on top, meaning advance approach. And here is that sign. Can you see it? Maybe you were not able to read it, but it said now you're leaving the area with the speed signaling, now you get route signaling. But actually there is not so much route signaling going on here, because most of the signals that we will encounter are clears or stops or approaches or restricted, and they don't have any specificities in the route signaling system. Next one is a clear approach or <laughs> clear approach is a stupid term. A definite approach signal telling us to drop to 14 speed in the route signaling area. Since we are now in the route signaling area, the terms of limited speed, medium speed and so on do not apply anymore. The only one that applies is track speed, restricted speed and obviously a stop. And we are approaching Santa Clara station and we will have to stop anyway. You 
you can see the red stop signal in front. Again, a bit late on the brakes at the end. That is the service that I want. But the fact that this door is actually here, yeah, the first door of my tri of my of my cars is beyond a sign that says platform closed ahead. But this is not actually my fault. I did not set the stop markers. The red light turned to a flashing yellow, meaning advance approach, telling us in the route signaling area, if I'm not mistaken, that we as a passenger train can just go on on line speed. Maybe the last 14L pattern. And we can throttle up a last time. Now we are approaching San Jose Diridon. What is the terminus for our service here? In real life it actually goes on until Gilroy I think, but not in the game. So, if I remember the layout of the track correctly, then we will approach a reduction in track speed soon here, telling us to slow down to 40. So we do that. Again, half a mile starting at this sign, then the speed must be down to 40. this funny little stop here. Let's take it seriously and ring the bell. Advance approach on the signal. And if you look at the speed diagram, we just hugged to the 40 reduction. On the right there is the central maintain maintenance facility for Caltrain with the washing street. Another reduction to 20 incoming. Half a mile, obviously when we're going slow, this half mile feels longer than when we're going fast. So we don't need to rush to slow down to the 20. So, 20. We're not speeding. Now we're coming in. We have an approach warning us about a red light on the next signal. 
telling us to slow down to 40, but it's not relevant because we have a lower track limit anyway. But we need to watch out. Next signal is supposed to be red. <coughs> yeah, dogs, you have to wait just a few minutes more than we will be in San Jose. So this is the next signal, we have been warned that it is supposed to be a red. So we are preparing for a stop. But when approaching we see that one of the red lights, the one on top, is actually flashing, meaning it is a restricting signal. We can go on, but with restricted speed. Restricted speed in the route signaling area is 20 max. But now we are entering the station area anyway, and the station area has a 10 mile track limit throughout. So we keep to the 10. Now keep your fingers crossed that the game does not crash because entering San Jose Diridon. Is another crucial point where the game sometimes <laughs> the dogs just started fighting underneath my desk. I would like to show the train from the outside camera, but I don't dare because that can crash the game at this point. Flanging sounds from going across the switch. A last honk, the bells for the platform. <coughs> and then we have to finish creeping up the platform into our stop position with the bell ringing. Yep, that's it. Terminus reached within the timetable more or less. Put the brakes at full, reverser off. So the next one who takes over this train brings their own reverse key. Well, have to close close the doors still. And then the service is finally finished after one and a half hours in-game time. I will just get off the train, have a last look on our baby bullet, our MP Express locomotive don't want to play this scenario obviously and with this I say thank you for watching thank you for moderating AJ and uh, I hope it was not too boring in the end and the signaling in the US is not too confusing I actually like it it has a lot of charm and uh, we will stream again on Sunday in the afternoon at 3 I'm not quite sure what we will be doing, but I will put it on the Twitch page. Thank you very much and see you around. <laughs>